Hello there you guys, welcome to another one of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more uh, current um, latest news. So as you did currently see uh, yesterday, uh, Liverpool, you know, winning comfortably away at Southampton, you know, by three goals to one, um, of course, um, as well, you know, to potentially, you know, keep their, you know, title uh, ambitions um, alive, um, of course, um, as well. So potentially now Liverpool um, top the league, um, of course, you know, by two points, of course, now, obviously, you know, they've won 25 out of 33, had seven draws and only suffered one defeat, um, of course, as well, and scored 75 goals this season in the league and conceded 20 um, of course um, as well but potentially you know it could still go either way probably I would favour Liverpool now you know to be uh, quite honest with you um, as well and potentially yesterday I did watch bits of the game you know Southampton you know went one nil up you know through Shane Long in the first was it nine minutes something like that Liverpool got back on level terms just before the half an hour mark you know Knight Bikaita you know scoring his uh, first goal for the club um, of course um, as well and then in the 80th minute, minute mark you know Salah getting his name um, on the score sheet yet again um, of course as well I think Jordan Henson um, had got the assist there for that um, as well but it was a great great ball from Mohamed Salah and potentially for me I think he's one of the best players in the Premier League not potentially one of the best forwards or winners and that you know but in terms um, of an attacking intent you know he's definitely um, one of the best um, is Mohamed Salah and I know his record against the big teams isn't really really good uh, this season but overall his work ethnic score his physicality is um, absolutely uh, fantastic um, indeed and then the third goal of course was from Jordan Henderson um, of course um, as well so that had wrapped uh, Liverpool uh, the three points up and it wasn't easy you know for Liverpool going to Southampton because recently you know Southampton Southampton have regained good form, you know, um, under Ralph Hassan Hull, um, of course, as well. He's had a lot of belief in the youngsters, um, of course, um, as well. And Southampton, you know, did actually, you know, start the game uh, really, really well, to be quite honest with you. But as soon as Liverpool equalised, you know, Liverpool's momentum, the growing confidence, and then they started to play, um, of course, um, as well. But potentially, you know, it could still go either way, to be quite honest, because if Manchester City, you know, were to win every game from now till the end of the season, potentially, you know, Manchester City, you know, would be champions. Because, of course, at the moment, you know, Liverpool, obviously, you know, have played a game extra than Man City. So potentially, you know, Manchester City have got a game in hand. Um, of course um, as well um, as we all know but potentially for me Salah definitely you know one of the best um, in the Premier League you know without a shadow of a doubt in terms of an attacking intent you know without a shadow of a doubt his work ethic is good as I said his, his physicality you know is very very good but I highly rate Sadio Mane as well I think he's um, a really really uh, good player um, indeed uh, for Liverpool I think again his work ethic is good you know he creates opportunities um, as well he can also score goals um, as he has proven I, I wouldn't compare him to Mohamed Salah because I do think Salah's better than Sadio Mane but I still really really highly rate uh, Sadio Mane you know to be uh, quite honest with you um, as well but you know Liverpool did the business you know last summer um, of course um, as well you know they invested well um, into their squad um, as I said you know they spent quite a bit of money uh, last summer um, of course um, as well and they addressed the deficiencies in the squad you know they got a great signing with Virgil van Dijk for £75 million in January of last year um, of course you know he's addressed their defensive deficiencies you know fantastically well um, indeed so essentially Liverpool have got a good team you know obviously Jordan Klopp obviously you know he's desperate to get that Premier League title of course because obviously he's never he, ha he hasn't won out yet at Liverpool um, as Jordan Klopp I know he won a couple of titles at Borussia Dortmund um, and all that as well did um, Jürgen Klopp but potentially he's desperate you know to uh, win that title of course and Liverpool have not won the title for nearly three decades um, of course um, as well so potentially Liverpool you know will be uh, desperate to get it but they've come close on a couple of occasions to quite honest you know when they, had, when, uh, when they had Brendan Rodgers of course you know they came very very close to winning the title uh, that year they came close back in 2009 as well when we beat them to the title uh, by four points um, of course as well so Liverpool probably won't get a better opportunity than this you know to be uh, quite honest with you overall they have won 18 you know old first divisions of course but they've actually never ever won um, a Premier League um, of Liverpool um, of course and they ha actually haven't, haven't won a major honour since like what 2006 so they haven't won a major honours for like 13 years um, or something um, like that as well but they've got a great squad you know Kaita Liverpool fans you know will be impressed with him scoring his first goal uh, for the club you know Henderson getting an assist and also getting his name um, on the score sheet as well but I think Liverpool have got a great attacking trio in Firmino Mane and Salah um, and all that um, as well so essentially you've got a favour Liverpool now you know to be quite honest you know look at the running you know Liverpool obviously you know go to Chelsea uh, next Sunday um, as well which is going to be a tough game uh, for Liverpool of course because Liverpool you know drew them early on this season at Stamford Bridge um, obviously you know lost to them in the FL Cup uh, back in September uh, this season um, of course um, as well and uh, you've got potentially you know, Manchester City uh, they go to a Crystal Palace away uh, next week um, of course as well which is also going to be difficult for City because obviously City lost to Crystal Palace um, at home and we do know that City's home record um, is very very um, good um, indeed but obviously if, uh, Liverpool's focus now will be on the Champions League of course uh, midweek week as well they've got Porto Manchester City um, of course um, I've got a uh, Tottenham um, of course and City do play Tottenham twice in the Champions League um, of course they also have got to play Tottenham um, in the league as well City have still got to go to um, Old Trafford um, of course as well um, as we all currently know so you know with the run you've got, probably got to favour Liverpool you know to be quite honest with it there again you know City have had the experience um, as we all currently know you know they've already won three Premier League titles you know they're, they're going for the fourth league but obviously last season you know obviously it was probably won by January you know was the league to be quite honest you know City would 
had won the title by about, was it 19 points or something like that, you know, last season. Actually, my club, Manchester United, you know, finished second, but I think City won it by about 19 points, you know, you know, City got 100 points, um, of course, 19 points, but City got 100 points, um, of course, I think they gained um, 100 points. I think last season they won 32 games, I think they scored about 106 goals, um, of course, in uh, Manchester City, um, of course, um, as well. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, um, you know who's going to win the league. I'm not really particularly bothered, to be quite honest with you, because obviously I'm a Manchester United fan. As I did say, I hate City and I hate Liverpool, to be quite honest with you, but potentially if I had to choose, um, you know, I'd rather Liverpool win the league, you know, you know, than rather, you know, Manchester City, you know, win the uh, quadruple, you know, to be uh, quite honest with you, um, of course, um, as well. Uh, but I'd rather choose City uh, if they do get knocked out um, of the Champions League, um, of course, um, as well. So potentially, yeah, City have still got to play Tottenham in the league, they've still got to play Manchester United, of course. You know, as I said, Liverpool goes to Chelsea um, on Sunday, which is going to be um, a tough game uh, for Liverpool, um, of course, um, as well. So obviously, it's very, very close this season. As I said, you know, obviously, last season it wasn't close um, at all. It was, it was obviously, you know, one back in uh, January, you know, of last season. I've got to be um, honest with you um, as well. But potentially, yeah, yeah we'll see where, um, what happens, um, of course, um, as well. So City go away to Crystal Palace on Sunday. They kick off before Liverpool and then Liverpool play uh, Chelsea, um, of course, um, as well. So I just wanted to uh, give you um, an update um, on that. So in my perspective, I do think you know Liverpool will win the league. You know, to be quite honest, if I had to choose, it would be Manchester City. Uh, you know, uh, and hoping that obviously City don't win the quadruple, of course, because I don't want any team you know to beat what you know our remarkable achievement, what we did, you know, back in uh, nineteen ninety nine, of course, um, as well. You know, when um, you know Manchester United uh, won the treble, you know, which was uh, twenty um, years ago, um, of course. Well, it's still interesting to see, but I hate City and I hate Liverpool, um, as you are all um, aware of um, as well. So, attention now, I'll uh, give you a bit of an update um, on some uh, transfer rumours uh, that are currently um, going on. I'll give you a bit of an update um, on my club, uh, Manchester United, um, of course, um, as well as they have been updating you on a regular basis. Obviously, I think Solskjaer wants to bring five new additions to Manchester United this summer, um, of course, um, as well. He wants to bring five new additions to Manchester United this summer. I think he's expected to orchestrate a big summer clear out, to be quite honest with you. And he's identified, you know, the key positions where he thinks Manchester United needs Jen Fernandez. I think potentially he wants someone at right back. You know, his priority is to recommend the right winner to come in. Obviously, you know, he wants to add some new additions um, in that midfield of course you know someone that can go alongside Pogba and then Manja Matic and I think we need a centre back you know someone that can go alongside Victor Lindelof um, of course um, as well because you can potentially see the deficiencies uh, in the squad um, of course well and obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, has got the Manchester United job um, on a permanent basis um, of course as well and obviously in this three year because obviously it's three year deal is signed his expectation levels will be you know to get us in that commanding position and to elevate us to high level and get us back up there you know competing with the likes of the cities the Liverpools um, and all that as well and get us back up there you know challenging for trophies and possibly you know winning trophies of course um, as well so it's essential that we get the right recruitment um, in the summer um, it's good that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, is emphasising his targets he's obviously been in conversations with Ed Woodward what players should come in what players should stay and what players uh, should leave um, in the summer um, of course as well but it's good that he's showing an interest in quite a few young players um, of course as well but we've got to get the right players who've got the ability to elevate Manchester United in the next two to three years um, of course um, as well but potentially maybe we should spend the money wisely in the summer not maybe spend you know too much money um, on one player um, of course as Manchester United have done in the past you know with Pogba and Lukaku, um, of course, um, as well. So maybe we should spend it wisely because we do know that the likes of Jadon Sancho is going to cost us around £100 million. Um We do know that the sites of Jaden Sancho is going to cost us a hundred million pounds, um, as we all know um, as well. You know, Rafael Varane's probably going to cost us around a um, hundred million pounds. But you've got other players that could be available for a re you know reasonable figure. You know, you've got you know Amwan Pesaka probably would cost us around 35, 40 million. You know, you've obviously um, got um, you know Callum Hudson Doyle that would maybe cost us thirty forty million. Declan Rice valued at around forty million pounds um, or something like that. So maybe we could get two or three players. You know, maybe for just um, over a um, hundred million pounds, of course. And I think he wants to be five new additions this summer as I said I think that'll cost us in the region of over 200 odd million pounds you know to be quite honest with you the most essential thing is Manchester United of course still looking to hire a director of football to come in um, of course as well you know to change a club structure um, and all that um, as well but obviously Solskjaer wants to build a team worthy um, of the club's history um, as we all know um, as well but potentially it's essential that we've got to try and get Champions League for next season um, of course well so in that aspect it makes us have a more of a competitive uh, summer uh, transfer window um, as we all know um, as well uh, if we want to get to players uh, to the highest level you know obviously we want Champions League for next season I think we've got to win at least five of our remaining six games in the league if we have got any chances of top four so to keep our top four ambitions alive Solskjaer's confirmed we've got to win at least five of our remaining six games um, of course um, as well but potentially as I did say we've been in a bad run of form lately you know we've lost three of our last four games um, of course um, as well obviously as next league game we go home to West Ham I think um, obviously we, our next actual match is obviously you know Barcelona um, in the Champions League uh, quarter final as well which is going to be a very very um, difficult game um, 
indeed, um, as we all know um, as well. Um, you know, Barcelona is going to be very, very difficult. Um, indeed, I think it's on Wednesday, uh, the 10th of April, you know, to be uh, quite honest with you as well. And we do know players are going to leave in the summer. We do know that there's still some uh, contract renewals uh, to sort out um, as well. And um, as I did uh, give you my um, update yesterday um, on Paul Pop, um, of course, um, as well, you know, there were a lot of reports indicating that reportedly Manchester United are in the process to begin contract negotiations with Paul Pogba, um, of course, um, as well. And reports are coming out, you know, there's been a lot of reports, you know, speculating him, you know, making a move to Real Madrid this summer. And I think from Paul Pogba's perspective, <clears throat> he does want to make the move uh, to Real Madrid this summer, reportedly, uh, does Paul Pogba um, as well, because he's been speaking a lot about Real Madrid, um, as we all know, described them as a dream club. You know, he says it's one of the biggest clubs in the world. He said Madrid, Madrid's a dream for anyone. So he's been talking a lot about them. You know, we heard about in uh, a couple of weeks back um, as well. So this could have concerns for Man United. It could have concerns uh, for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, uh, reportedly as well. Uh, obviously, Zinedine Zidane's a big um, admirer um, of the play, and Zinedine Zidane's emphasising his targets this summer because he obviously wants investment um, in that Real Madrid squad. And obviously, Paul Popper, um, of course, um, is one of them um, as well. Even though mainly his, his, his form's been rejuvenated under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, his, his performances have been below par um, in the last uh, couple of games, um, as we all know. So this is maybe why Solskjaer may be thinking about rotating him and operating him in a different position. And, you know, obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer may want to see a different side um, of Paul Popper's uh, game, um, as we all know as well. So I think he did consider putting him like in more of a defensive role, you know, to be uh, quite honest with you um, as well. But there's been a lot of reports, you know, going on about it as well. So now, reportedly, he's demanding an astronomical salary of £500,000 a week if he's to commit to a new contract with Manchester United. I think Man United are willing to offer him a new three-year deal, um, of course, as well. Um, of course, obviously, at the moment, he's still on the contract till 2021, so he's still got over two years on his deal. I think there is um, an option um, of a further year um, as well for uh, Paul Popper. But of course, his agent, Riley Ola, has been in a couple of negotiations with uh, Real Madrid about a summer move. He's also been to Manchester to have a couple of, you know, he's had a, he's been to Manchester to have negotiations, you know, about a, uh, a summer move uh, for Paul Pogba, of course, well. So his agent, Riley Ola, has been in the process of finding him a new club. And reports have been coming out that Real Madrid are preparing to put a bid in of around £125 million pounds for Paul Pogba, um, of course, this summer. Po uh, Solskjaer did confirm himself, though, that he, he's happy at Manchester United and he still feels as though he's got a big future um, at Manchester United um, as Paul Pogba as well. Reports came out the other week he was also demanding a significant pay rise annually. He was demanding 14 million a year, of course, if he, 14 million a year if he was to uh, go to uh, Real Madrid, um, of course, um, as well. So potentially, you know, there's been a lot of rumours going on about it. There's also been talks that he could possibly make a return back to Italy, you know, where he did have four years uh, with Juventus, um, of course, um, as well. And potentially, you know, Manchester United paid £89 million pounds for him back in 2016. So potentially, he is our uh, most expensive uh, sign, as we all know. But I think if any offers do come this summer, Man United are willing to reject any offers, um, of course, um, as well. But we do know there's been a lot of talks about it, and now he's demanding £500,000 a week potentially if he's to commit to a new contract and potentially at the moment he's on £300,000 a week so potentially he's demanding £200,000 more um, of course and as, well, and as I did say so he wants to be the highest paid player uh, you know alongside Alexis Sanchez in the squad but as I did currently say you know currently what Alexis Sanchez is earning is totally affecting our wage structure you know um, in a bad way you know to be quite honest because obviously Sanchez is our highest paid player now we've got other players you know that are demanding quite a bit more money you know De Gea is demanding quite a bit more money he hasn't signed a new contract we've got Pogba now that's demanding more money you know we saw it with Herrera, Herrera he was demanding more money um, of course um, as well so I think what Sanchez is um, earning I think he just emphasises you know how um, you know it's affecting um, our wage structure um, in a bad way um, of course um, as well but yeah Pogba you know his future's up in the arm we don't know what's happening with him um, at the moment um, of course well but if agreement was made in the summer obviously his agent Riley Ola, you know will probably you know get quite a bit of that money you know to be uh, quite honest with you um, as well and obviously you've got Ander Herrera there as well it's looking like he's on his way out of Manchester United uh, this summer um, of course well I think he's joined uh, PSG on a free transfer as we all know we do know that Ander Herrera's performances overall have improved under Solskjaer and his form's been rejuvenated he's been playing really really well for the team as Ander Herrera you know he breaks up the player well he's tenacious shows a lot of tenacity um, about his play as well but he was demanding £200,000 a week from Manchester United you know if he was to remain loyal to the club if he was to sign um, a new contract term um, of course um, as well but this is his fifth season now I think he's made about 187 appearances uh, for the club as well as um, Ander Herrera um, as we all know um, as well but I think his three year deal is going to be signed with PSG uh, you know worth around £200,000 a week um, of course um, as well so potentially now obviously we'll, we're eyeing out a replacement um, of course for uh, Ander Herrera of course because potentially we need new additions into that midfield because we've got Pogba's futures up in the air you know Matic for me too slow I've got strong reservations about it so we need a centre defensive mid that's fast and tenacious um, as I did say you know Herrera, looking likely Herrera is going to be leaving and obviously we've got them fringe players uh, you know in that midfield as well of Tomimway, Pereira and Fred of course for me I don't know if Fred um, is a long term solution to be quite honest with you but you know to be quite fair when we did have that injury crisis you know Pereira stepped up stepped up to the plate you know McTominay stepped up to the plate um, of course
Wolves um, as well. It was good to see him score his first goal for the club against Wolves um, as well. You know, I'm at Tommy when he's been playing between the lines very, very well, but I don't know if they've got the capabilities, you know, to uh, graduate as, uh, to that level, um, of course, as well. So it is essential that we get some reinforcements in that midfield, um, of course, uh, this summer, um, of course, um, as well. And... Um, as I did currently say to you guys, you know, as I do keep uh, saying, you know, I do think, you know, players are going to leave Manchester United this summer. I think, you know, Solskjaer wants a big summer clear out, um, of course, um, as well, because Solskjaer's still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team. You know, we didn't spend now in January. You know, we didn't spend much last summer. We didn't get as proud to targets uh, last summer, um, of course, um, as well. So potentially Solskjaer's looking to uh, buy into our history, you know, basically he's emphasising his targets. But potentially, you know, the players I think are going to leave. I think Valencia's on his way out of the club, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. He's 33 now, um, of course, he's Valencia, you know, he's his 10th season at Manchester United, um, as we all know um, as well, but potentially he's lost his place in the team initially and we've opted against that decision to give him that new one-year extension, of course, I think Valencia um, is on his way out of the club um, as well. Um, Rojo, I think, is on his way out of Manchester United um, as well, because obviously his career has been affected, you know, with a string of injuries um, he's currently um, suffered um, as well, he's just recovered from long-term absence, I think he's on his way out, you know, with the, you know with Eric Bay, I think he's possibly um, on his way out, and if a new centre-back is to come this summer, Eric Bay could be um, on his way out out of Manchester United because I still highly rate Bay. he's going to score one goal for the club in the league he's made about 49 appearances in the Premier League but obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's preferred choice has been Smalling and Phil Jones um, ahead um, of Eric Bay um, of course um, as well but he's been in and out of the team this season of course obviously it was one of Jose Mourinho's first signings um, of course as well obviously you know Jose Mourinho recommended 11 players to come in spent just under 400 million pounds but his first signing actually was Eric Bay. so we paid 30 million pounds in from Villarreal three years ago um, of course um, as well so potentially he could be on his way out, and there's been rumours saying that Real Madrid have reportedly you know, been interested in him. Real Madrid are preparing to put a £35 million bid in for him, of course. Ginny Dean Zidane's informed Real Madrid, you know, to make a move for uh, Eric Bay, um, of course, uh, this summer. And potentially Manchester United even may demand Rafael Varan um, as part of the deal, um, of course, um, as well, because potentially Man United have been linked to Rafael Varan. There's been a host of clubs that have been uh, linked uh, with Rafael Varan uh, reportedly um, as well. I think Juventus, Manchester United, PSG, of course, I think it said Bayern Munich um, have also showed an interest in him as well, because he's a great, great play and that's the type of players you know we should be uh, targeting because he's only 25 he's still got a lot of years ahead of him as I said it's remarkable what he's achieved he's won 15 major honours or 16 major honours something like that with Real Madrid he's been at Real Madrid 8 years um, of course he's made just under 270 appearances for Real Madrid um, in all competitions of course as well we do know he's not going to be cheap he's got a release clause of 429 million in his current deal with Real Madrid I think he's still got a contract with Real Madrid until 2022 um, of course um, as well but the reports have been coming out from Spain saying that he's considering leaving in Real Madrid this summer uh, reportedly um, is Rafael Varane as well but I don't, I don't think Real Madrid have got any intentions of letting him go um, of course well, uh, unless you know Real Madrid can obviously you know get a replacement for him um, of course um, as well but yeah great great player indeed you know he spent the majority of his career in Spain he actually began his career um, in France you know did uh, Rafael Varane um, of course um, as well so Manchester United have showed an interest in him I think he'd be a great leader in our back line he'd look very very good alongside Victor Lindelof um, in our back line um, as we all know um, as well and you've got Jones's future that's still uncertain you know you've got Chris Smalling's future that's still uncertain um, as well so potentially Varane's been a Manchester United target um, I think Darmian's on his way out of the club in the summer um, as well because he's enjoyed a very very difficult time as a Manchester United player so I do think he's on his way out as well uh, we do know that probably you know Alexis Sanchez um, is on his way out of Manchester United um, as we all know um, as well because Sanchez again enjoyed a difficult time you know he's been here about 15 16 months you know he's suffered quite a few injuries um, of course but when he has been given the opportunity you know he's just been very very poor he's been inconsistent he's lacked goals so that just emphasises how ineffective he's been for the team um, Alexis Sanchez of course and obviously as I did say of what he's currently earning you know it's totally affecting um, our wage structure you know to be uh, quite honest with you um, as well and potentially you know considering substantial wages on it's going to be hard to find a buy for him this summer um, as we all know as well so we may consider loaning him out or is Sanchez willing to take some kind of wage cut um, I do not know you know to be quite honest with you. he's not playing to the highest level anymore he is age 30 now he was good when he was at Arsenal he was really really good but potentially you know he just hasn't fitted in it Manchester United and when he's played he's just so restricted hasn't been getting the freedom um, of course um, as well so he's looking likely um, he's um, on his uh, way out um, of course and at the moment um, of course um, he's out with an injury uh, a lot of people saying you know Manchester United of course you know should move Lukaku on um, of course um, as well because Lukaku for me you know I think when it comes to playing against the big teams you know he's a big game bottler you know to be quite honest with you as well I think his finishing needs to improve for me he doesn't get an, um, enough of them runs in behind to be quite honest with you his goal scoring forms you know very very good because he's got a great pedigree um, in the Premier League and he 
has scored a lot of goals for United um, as Romelu Lukaku but um, as I did currently say you know he's too slow his first touch really really uh, concerns me um, and all that um, as well and to be quite fair he regained his position you know before the international break and he was in really really good form you know I think he performs better and he looks more effective you know when he is getting that support um, up front you know Romelu Lukaku and he's still got a lot of years ahead of him and we fought quite a bit of money out on him you know we spent £75 million on Romelu Lukaku um, of course um, as well but yeah really he, he can be a good player and you know he, he's known for scoring goals so his ratio is still very very good but for me he's too slow he doesn't get enough of them runs in behind you know to be quite honest with you as well and when it comes to playing big opposition you know he does seem to uh, bottle it um, of course um, as well because he can he can create chances can Lukaku and he, and he does create chances but he just seems to struggle you know to put them in the back of the net you know especially um, against the big teams um, of course um, as well I also think my Matt um, is on his own way out of the club uh, this summer um, as well because potentially now he's been a good term for the club as one matter this is fifth season now um, in the process with Manchester United um, as we all know um, as well and obviously I think he's made about over 200 odd appearances for the club as we all know obviously Barcelona have been in talks to get him on a free transfer this summer um, of course um, as well but obviously one matter has been a good servant in the Premier League you know he's won a lot of trophies he hasn't won the Premier League and that's the only thing um, he hasn't won you know we got him for 40 million pounds back in 2014 from Chelsea this is fifth season out United obviously of course he had two or two half two and a half three years there uh, with Chelsea um, of course um, as well but potentially he's just recovered uh, from a hamstring injury um, of course um, as one matter um, of course um, as well but potentially I think Man United have been in talks of maybe you know getting him a new deal but I don't think we're willing to offer him a new long term uh, contract term um, extension considering that um, he's age 30 now um, he's one matter of course um, as well so potentially you know um, he could be um, on his uh, way out of Manchester United um, as we all know um, as well so yeah players are going to depart um, in the summer because Van Gaal did it you know he planned a big summer clear out and this is what you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is currently uh, doing now um as we all know um, as well and obviously now you've got De Gea demanding wages of around £350,000 a week and currently he's on £200,000 a week at the moment so potentially you can see De Gea is demanding an extra £150,000 a week of course and he wants to be one of the highest paid players at the club um, alongside Sanchez as well reports have been coming out about De Gea saying that PSG are reportedly willing to meet his £350,000 a week wage demand so PSG are reportedly being interested in I still think he wants to stay at Manchester United he wants to remain loyal to Manchester United and he wants to commit his long term future in Manchester United because he's been a great servant for the club so far you know he's potentially the best goalkeeper um, in the world this is 7th 8th season uh, we do know that Real Madrid have been long admirers um, of David De Gea um, of course as well but obviously still under contract here till 2020 as we all know because last year Manchester United activated a 12 month extension um, on his uh, current uh, contract um, as well but potentially De Gea has made over 300 appearances for the club he's won everything um, here uh, domestically um, of course um, as well as uh, David De Gea um, won everything here domestically he's made over 300 appearances in all competitions I think he's met, uh, got um, 100 Premier League clean sheets as well, which is uh, very, very um, impressive. And obviously, you know, he's won the Club's Player of the Year for out of five seasons, as we all know. And I think he's won some Musby Player of the Year, you know, quite a few times, um, as well as David De Gea. But he's been here since Ferguson in the area. So I think this is what his eighth season is. It, is it now, you know, with Manchester United um, or something um, like that um, as well? So potentially he could be on his way out as well, possibly. Um, Ashley Young, you've got as well. I think he needs to go um, as well, because by the time he's won year extension, you know, does um, expire. Obviously, Ashley Young will be uh, nearly a 35 years of age um, of course well but Ash Young's passed it now again being a good servant to the club and he's won everything he domestically and over the years he has been very very essential but for me now he's way past it Ashley Young and back in the day you know he was a good winger you know was Ashley Young you know to be uh, quite honest with you um, as well but potentially I do think he's passed it now you know to be uh, quite honest with you um, as well so quite a few players are probably going to leave this summer um, as we all know um, as well and as I was saying to you guys um, as I did say you know Solskjaer's basically said said basically that he wants Crystal Palace's and Juan Bissaka reportedly he wants uh, Declan Rice as well and he reportedly wants Chelsea's Callum Hunter Doyle so reportedly these are the targets you know that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants and he's targeting a lot of young upcoming prospects you know they're all British um, of course um, as well you know Anwan Pisako is English Declan Rice is English Callum Hunter Doyle is um, English um, of course as well and Anwan Pisako I think would be a perfect successor to Antonio Valenti and he'd be a good upgrade you know I think he's got the ability to elevate Manchester United in the next two to three years he's only young he's 21 years of age of course and he's available for a reasonable figure you know of around 35 40 million pounds and reports are coming out saying that Manchester United were preparing to put a £35 million bid in for Amon wan um, of course, um, as well. And Declan Rice um, has also been mentioned um, in the media um, as well. You know, defensive midfielder can operate um, as a centre back um, as well. Um, one of England's youngest um, upcoming uh, futures um, as well. Reportedly, he's had a great season with West Ham. Reportedly, um, reportedly he's had a great season with West Ham. He's 20 years of age. Uh, reportedly, um, as well, and he's had a great season with West Ham. He's still got a contract with West Ham, I think, till 2024, um, of course, um, as well. But I think he's valued at around 40 million pounds. So do you think he'd fit in our midfield very, very well um, indeed? Do you think he'd blend in well in that midfield if he came in? So 
Bruto, he's been mentioned as well. You've got Callum Munster Dai, um, of course, who's been uh, men also mentioned um, as well. And Callum Munster Dai, I don't think we'll probably get come to an agreement to get him this summer because I think Chelsea will be reluctant, you know, to let Callum um, Munster Dai uh, leave to be quite honest with you. And obviously, back in January, you know, it was Bayern Munich's uh, top priority, you know, was uh, Callum Munster Dai, um, as we all know as well. Bayern Munich, of course, uh, Bayern Munich had held negotiations. Bayern Munich were willing to um, offer him that number 10 shirt, um, of course, as well. And I actually put a transfer request in back in January, but Chelsea were reluctant to let Callum Munster Dai uh, leave, um, of course, um, as well. So potentially Bayern Munich, you know, may revive their interest this summer, of course. Obviously, it said that Manchester United have showed an interest um, in Callum Munster Dai um, as well. It also said that Liverpool have had negotiations uh, with his agent. <coughs> He said that Liverpool have had negotiations uh, with his agent um, as well. But potentially for me, he is a winger. He can also play um, as a forward um, as well. You know, can uh, Callum um, Udsa die? But obviously, he wants to see first team football week in, week out. And he hasn't really been experiencing this at Chelsea. I think he most recently, you know, made his first Premier League start. You know, did Callum Udsa die? But, you know, he hasn't really been given the opportunities in the Premier League. I think he's been participating more in, like, the cup competitions as Callum Udsa die. But he's only 18 years of age, of course. I think Chelsea have been in the process of trying to convince him, you know, to sign um, a new contract term and all that. Um, as well, but at the moment they haven't come to an agreement to get him a new contract, but he still remains under contract with Chelsea till 2020, um, of course, um, as well. So there has been, you know, talks about that going on. I think Chelsea have got a transfer ban, as we all know. I don't. I think Chelsea have appealed against the decision, but uh, if it is lifted, I don't know if it's going to be lifted um, or not. To be quite honest with you, um, I'm not too sure. But they did get given a transfer ban, um, as we um, all currently know um, as well. And uh, we do know that you know there could be a good um, idea replacing Fernando Herrera as well. You know, there's been a lot of talks going on um, about Saul Nigue. Um, as well, you know, that Atletico Madrid midfield I've been updating you on, and he can operate as a defensive mid, he can also uh, play um, as a central mid as well, you know, console Negas. So, there has been talks about him, you know, going on as well. He's 24, he's Spanish, um, of course, um, as well, so he is young. Obviously, he spent the majority um, of his career with Atletico Madrid because obviously, you know, he graduated uh, from their youth system, of course. I think he's made about over 200 appearances uh, for the club, but again, he's going to cost, you know, staggering amounts of money. He's going to cost quite a bit of money because he's got a release clause in his Atletico Madrid deal of £128 million. Pounds, um, of course um, as well so potentially if Athletic, if, if Athletic Comedy are willing to get sanction him off obviously they'll probably demand that 128 million release clause uh, to be um, you know triggered um, of course um, as well I think it's all said that City um, have also been interested in him as well I think his stability is supposed to be good he can actually operate as a defensive mid as I said a central mid a right mid as well he can operate as he can play as a number 6 he can play as a number 8 um, as well so he can play in them in them roles you know can this uh, Sol Niguez um, as well so potentially there has been talks about him recent reports have said that it's been revealed that reportedly um it's been revealed that reportedly he wants to make um, a move uh, to the Premier League, um, of course, as well. And obviously, we do know the club's number one priority target is Jaden Sancho, of course, but he's going to probably cost us in the region of around £100 million, um, of course, as well. We need someone who can play between the bylines, you know, put crosses into the box as well. And Jaden Sancho, you know, um, is capable of that, as we all know. But he's still got a contract with Dortmund until 2022, um, as we all know, um, as well. So there has been a lot of talks going on about him. I think he's still the club's number one priority target. He's attracted interest, you know, from quite a few teams um, as well. But he's only just turned 19 years of age again British you know one of England's youngest um, upcoming talents but his performances in Germany have been absolutely uh, fantastic um, indeed so yeah that's really everything to update you on as I did say you know Liverpool Man City is either going to be one of them who are going to win the league of course I'd, I'd say Liverpool now you know to be quite honest but obviously the more Liverpool keep winning games obviously that's going to inten intensi intensify you know more pressure on Manchester City um, of course um, as well so there's still five or six games to go as we all know so anyway jot your comments like on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always and take care God bless see you again very very soon